Hello everybody, welcome back. It's Rosemary with Enchanting Rosemary Sewing and Embroidery. As you know, Christmas is coming and it's time to start making those Christmas crafts. And I thought it would be really fun for us to make a doll with a sewing theme. I will be using my Solaire sewing machine. We will, we will be doing some digitizing for the clothing of the doll and also to make her face. But a lot of it will also be hand sewing and we're gonna throw in a little bit of clay in that as well. So it should be a really fun project and I hope you hang around to watch. Okay, so I told you that we're gonna do use just a small amount of clay and that is exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna make the shoes out of um, an air dry clay. I'm gonna use Sculpey Air Dry. Um, I like this one um, a lot because it's soft and easy to use and I don't have to put it in the oven. And this is not a polymer clay video. I am not an expert. I confess that I would like to be really good at it, um, but I kind of dabble in it a little bit. But the biggest reason why I want to use an air dry clay is because I want this doll to stand up really sturdy. She's going to have a lot of weight and she needs some good flat feet to stand, hold her up. So that's why we're going to use clay. And then we're going to put dowels in for her legs and on her legs, I'm gonna put bobbins to make her just really sewing themed and fun. So she needs something that's gonna be able to hold it, all of that up. So I'm gonna start with just um, this little square of air dry clay. And we're gonna keep this as simple as we possibly can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of shape out something that looks like a shoe, like a little tennis shoe maybe. We'll smooth it out. Um, this is air dry clay again, so I don't have to use clay softener. I can just put a little bit of water on it to soften it up and smooth out the edges. I'm gonna put just a little piece right here on the top like this to be the top of her foot. And I do have um, a metal tool here that I can blend all this together with and when I um, finish it I'm gonna put some little socks on it before I actually put the bobbins on there so um, even this part doesn't have to be absolutely beautiful um, don't worry about it if you're not um, a sculptor you're more of a sewer and this part is a little intimidating um, let's just make sure that she's got some feet going on here. On the side, I want to kind of just go down this way and create the sole of the shoe. And we're going to paint these. So... Um, Hopefully any of the bad parts will be covered up with paint. Let's just smooth this part out just a little bit here. And If you want, you can turn it upside down and we'll just give her a little bit of a heel. But you don't have to do something like that. It's not that important. Who's going to see it, right? So let's smooth this out. And then mostly it's just a matter of smoothing it out with your fingers to make it look as good as you want it to look. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a dowel and put it right down the middle like that. And that's going to be her legs. So we want that to dry on there like that. And then I'm going to Just take a roll of clay
and I'm going to just put it across the top like this. to mimic shoelaces. Let's cut this part and this part like that. I'm going to just kind of make a mark right here. And I'll smooth this out a little bit more and work on it for a while longer, but I'm not going to keep that on camera. And then I'll make two of them. We just let this dry for probably a couple of days to make sure it's dry all the way through. And then we'll paint it and um, we'll start to put our doll together. So this should be a lot of fun. And like I said, don't be intimidated by a little bit of clay. Um, you don't have to be an expert. We just want something that's going to look like a shoe at the bottom. Okay, let's move on. So here are my shoes. This, um, I did I've done several of these shoes, and this one I did with Sculpey Firm and then went ahead and baked it in the oven, but I did finish up the other ones that were done with the air dry clay, and they came out pretty much the same way. I just wanted to be able to show you how to go ahead and paint these. Um, all the paints I'm using today are um, folk art. I like their paint a whole lot. It uh, has a nice finish. Uh, and it goes on the clay pretty nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a little bit of brown and black together. So the dark brown is dry, and what I'm going to do is I have this um, really scruffy looking brush that I keep just for dry brushing, and I'm going to load that up with a lighter brown, and then use a paper towel and really rub it all off so there's almost um, no paint left on it, and then I'm going to just kind of rub it across the top. Let's see if I can get this centered in here so we can see what we're doing and it's just kind of like a dry brushing over the whole top like that and then I'm going to take just a little bit of a lighter brown color and do the same thing again 
fill up the brush and then um, wipe it all off and then kind of do a, a light brushing over the top again. And then I'm going to really scrub this brush till there's almost nothing left on it at all and kind of scrub over the top. And the last color is going to be even lighter. You can see. And I um, I went ahead and I painted the, the dowels and you can see my fingerprints have gotten all over the darn thing. Um, so I can go ahead and paint. And we're going to cover the legs with a few different things so it doesn't have to be beautiful but I don't want the wood from the dowel to be showing through either um, when I make my dolls I kind of let them speak to me I know that sounds a little bit on the crazy side but I uh, I just want them to kind of tell me what I'm what they want and how they're gonna look in the end so as I work on this it's probably going to change quite a few times uh, as I go along. You never can tell uh, where where they'll end up. Sometimes they start uh, um, as like a friendly little fairy, and then they turn into a wicked witch. So I just don't know what they're going to look like. My my idea with this is that it will eventually be um, just a fun little pincushion doll that uh, has a sewing theme. I wanted at first to put bobbins on her legs. And I picked the wrong size dowel. So I tried to put um, some old metal bobbins that I had in my stash on the legs of one of the other dolls that I was working on and they didn't fit. So I ended up putting eyelets on there instead. We'll see where it goes from here. I still do want to digitize the face a little bit, but I think I'm going to do more of it as buttons for, for the eyes instead of actual digitizing for the eyes. Let's go ahead and paint. So I'll go back and clean that up in a minute so that it looks a little bit better than it does. But it um, doesn't have to be fancy. They're just the little shoes in my doll. Wait, let's see. Let's put this where we can see it a little bit better. That's what it's going to look like when I'm all done. And then we'll go ahead and we'll add on the rest of the doll and we'll see where she goes. So you can see I've moved the camera. I've still got a lot of learning to do about where to put the camera to try and get a good view of this. Hopefully this will work a little bit better. Um, here's my shoes all completely finished. And I went ahead and I put some little hair ties down here to kind of be socks on the tops of the shoes. And then I put the eyelets I was talking about um, on the legs. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a styrofoam ball like this and I'm going to just kind of push it down on top of her legs like this and I want to make sure that she's standing nice and flat 
as I work that down in place. So that should work okay just like that. And I can put just a little bit of glue on there if I want to do to make it so that the styrofoam ball doesn't work itself off. Um, but um, then I, what I want to do is I want to kind of use my thumbs to shape this ball because it's a little rounder than I would want it to be for, um, what do we say? For the bottom part of her body, <laughs> does that work okay? Let's just say that. So I'm gonna just kind of work at that just a little bit to get it um, a little bit shaped. And as I start, as I continue to um, form the body, I will adjust that more to make it work the way I want it to. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna put a piece of wire right here. So I'm going to take this piece of wire and I'm just going to push it down into the styrofoam ball. And that looks like a pretty good size to me for what I'm trying to do. And then I'm going to take some uh, masking tape and I'm just going to cover the whole thing in masking tape in different pieces. Kind of just um, putting it just everywhere that I can find that I think needs a little bit of smoothing out with masking tape. So I've gone ahead and covered the entire wire and the styrofoam ball in masking tape. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to wrap her in batting. And this is not anything fancy. It's something I bought at a discount store um, by the yard. You don't want to put a lot of money into it. And then I've cut it into strips. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it around my um, metal wire that I did here. And I'm going to wrap it up around the top of the wire here because this is where her neck is going to be. But I'm only going to do one layer there. But as I come down this way, I'm going to probably go around a couple of times where her shoulders are going to be. And then continue down and around um, wrapping to her waist and a little bit into the styrofoam ball so that it starts to blend in there. And then I'm going to stop right about right here and I'm going to put a pin in it right here because I need to, let's do a sharper pin than that, because I need to put some, a wire right here for her arms. So I'm going to continue wrapping. Here's another piece. And then right here where the neck begins, I'm going to put another piece of wire. This one's probably a little too long, but I'll work with that. Then I'm going to come around the neck and see the way I wrapped it like that. Let's straighten her arms out a little bit more here so I got room to and like that. And that'll hold those arms where I want her to be. And I have in the past covered the wire as well to make the arms. But with this doll, we're not going to do that because I have another idea for the arms. So we'll come back to that. But that'll hold her arms in place pretty good. And then we're just, I'm going to pull really tight because I want, I don't want her to be squishy. I want her to be nice and firm, especially as I come down around her waist. So we can get a shape for her waist here and then we'll come down and wrap a little bit around her hips here like this and she can be um i can make her kind of plump if i was making her into a mrs santa claus or i could make her skinny um however which way that my body form goes and how whichever way the doll starts to say that she wants to be we'll just kind of let her speak to us until she gets the way we want when we're ready we're going to turn this around and then i'm just going to take a needle and thread and i'm just going to sew this really um quickly just to hold it together so that I can put the next piece of fabric on.
So as you can see, I shaped her a little bit more as I was stitching her up the back just by using a needle and thread and pulling it in in certain parts where I wanted it to be pulled in. And I actually put a couple of pom-poms right here on the top to make her stick out in the front a little bit more and then stitch that some more. So um, I think that looks pretty good. That's the um, direction I was going for. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. This is called uh, Craft Velour. You can find it online at a lot of different doll sites. I like to go to the doll net. They have a lot of different um, uh, patterns and stuff for making dolls on that website and they also have merchants that sell the Craft Velour and they have it in all different colors. So it's fuzzy on one side and smooth on the other and it has a lot of stretch. It's a polyester knit, so it's easy to pull across your fabrics. So what I did was I cut a square about the right size. And here it is right here. And you want the stretch to go across and then just put it across her neck because we're going to cover the rest of it in... Um, in other fabric so all it has to do is to cover her neck where her head's gonna go let's turn it around pull it across like this and just stitch it in place right across the back of the neck okay so I've got the neck fabric sewn on to the doll and before we go any further, I wanted to let you know that um, when I was finishing this doll up, I lost one of the video clips. So I'm redoing this again, and you'll see that this doll is a little different than the last one. She's got um, blue socks, and she actually has bobbins uh, on her legs because I use smaller dowels on it. So this is definitely a different doll. Don't get a little freaked out when you start to see them change from... Um, one doll to the next as you go through the videos because that's just the way this doll is going to end up looking. So uh, the next step that we need to do is uh, we need to put some clothes on her. And I don't know about you, but um, I have all sorts of fabric that has um, a sewing theme. Every time I go to the store that there is um, sewing fabric I'm going to buy it. You can bet on it. Um, there's one with sewing machines. There's one with pins. I like this one a whole lot. It's real cute. It's got irons and uh, rotary cutters and patterns and all that sort of thing. So we're going to use um, these fabrics to dress her. And I think what I've decided to do for this one is I'm going to use these pins. And I cut a big piece of uh, square fabric. And then what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to cut a couple of slits in the top of it like this, just like that. We're not going to get real particular here. And then I'm going to take the doll and we're going to lay this part here right across her front and come around and wrap it around this side like this leaving the slits across the top of this wire here and put another one under here like this and then flip her over and figure out about how big this should be. So it's probably too big right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut it. I've told you before that I kind of just sew by the seat of my pants a lot of my uh, creations are just um, pin it and cut it. So we're going to take this and we're going to tuck it like this. And we're going to put some pins in it. And I put a lot of pins in my dolls. And I have these little glass head pins. I like them a lot because they're tiny. They're not long like most of them, but they're very sharp and um, the tips don't pull off. So I like that a whole lot. I'll pull this nice and snug. 
around her body. This little girl is a little bit on the plump side, but that's okay. We're gonna put pins here. And then as it comes down around the bottom of it, that's too long. Because I'm just covering her bottom, um, I'm gonna give her a skirt eventually. So this is kind of not only going to be her blouse, but it's also going to be her her panties as well. Let's cut this too. That pin is not exactly where I want it. Okay. So I want to show you a stitch that you can do, and I'm hoping that I can do this in a way that you can see it, that you can do, that's called a ladder stitch. And what you do is you go in from, you're gonna take your needle and you're gonna put it underneath and put it through these two. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go parallel, I'm gonna make a stitch that goes sideways like this. I'm gonna pull it up. Hang on just a minute, we're gonna close the door. My son-in-law is listening to the fights and I can hear it. So, where were we? Okay, so we're gonna go from here to here and make a stitch sideways in the same way, parallel to the edge of the fabric or the edge of this fold. So we're gonna put it there and pull it through. And then if we come back exactly straight across and make another one here, then come straight across and make another one here. And as we go, we tug on the thread and it actually pulls the th edges of the fabric together and pulls the thread onto the inside. So it's, it's practically invisible. Um, and if you don't get in a hurry and you make your stitches nice and tiny, you will do a closure that'll almost look like you did this on the sewing machine. And I use the ladder stitch a whole lot when I'm making um, a lot of my dolls. I was sitting here thinking as I was putting this together that um, I put a lot of pins in my dolls too because I pin the clothes onto it and then I sew the clothes on there and it's become a big joke around my house um, on mom is that um, be very careful because there's probably going to be a pin. I just finished making a doll for my daughter-in-law for her birthday and I dropped it off at my son's house because um, we're not going into anybody's house right now because of COVID so I just kind of dropped it at the front door and then I started home and before I even got home my son called me and said, Mom, look, I pulled five pins. And he had a picture um, of him holding five pins in his hand that he had to text me um, out of that doll already. So, ha, 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 poor mom. But yeah, I admit, I leave a lot of pins in my dolls. I try and remember to pull them out. But when you're pinning everything, that's just something that happens. And it's hereditary because my mother used to put lots of pins in her clothes when she was making them. And, and we used to say, make sure that you go through that outfit completely because if you don't, the baby's going to get stuck. Um, so I guess that's just something that goes down through the family. Um, so you can see I got this completely stitched closed, so it looks pretty good. And then I'm going to tip it this way and pull this down and sew that. So I'll show you that in just a minute. And yeah, don't be surprised because the next video has got a different outfit on. So now I'm at the bottom of my doll and I've kind of just taken the fabric and pushed it down almost like folding an envelope and, and then I'm just going to stitch it. This is going to go under a skirt so it doesn't, it's not going to be that noticeable um, unless somebody's really looking for it. But I just want to stitch that up close to her leg here so that I don't um, have any puckers. 
and I just kind of keep going up this way and I'll even come in and take in some of this right here and pull it in and and take a, a pleat right there and just keep working on it until I get the shape that I want and I'm going to show you another doll here so I'm just going to go ahead and put that needle right there so here's another one that I'm working on um, different fabric I did the same thing except for I put some little hair ties around the bottom to cover the tops of the shoes and you can see that I, I brought in the whole bottom part of her and on the sides and then up here around her neck I I glued a little bit of lace um, we all have little pieces of lace in different places so that'll hide the top part for me so that um, I think that she was she came out looking pretty good I really like the way she is so I think what we're going to do next is we're going to start working on her head so let's go ahead and um, and do that hi everybody so um I think we're going to just go ahead and stop right there. Um, the, this video is getting a little bit long, but don't forget to come back and see next week. I'm going to go ahead and do the face, and we're going to do um, some digitizing of the face on the, your Luminaire Stellaire Dream Machine, and we're going to digitize the, her apron that she's wearing. And I thought it would be fun just to kind of give you a little bit of a sneak peek um, on where we're going with this. So we're making a little pincushion doll. She's got a pincushion on the back of her head. She's got an embroidered face and um, the clay shoes. Uh, she um, looks like she's going to be a kind of a really fun doll. And I hope that you are, are enjoying making this project. This one is completely finished. She's got her um, apron on and she's holding a seam ripper in her hand and she's got a little bit of hair. Uh, it's just a fun little doll that we can make for Christmas presents. And um, if you're having a good time watching these videos, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and like. And I'll see you next week. Bye.